Hello. It's been a while since my last video, not that this is unusual, but I do have a legitimate reason for it. You see this complicated suspension setup? Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. I'll actually mention up front in the video before anyone clicks off, viewer retention is quite a tricky thing on YouTube, that I ended up making fully animated suspension and beam for this car. It took so long that I'll probably just make a separate video about it, partly as a resource for you and partly so I can procrastinate editing that. Stay tuned. So I'm actually doing this to announce something. I used to run automation contests on my Discord server, but stopped sometime last year because they just weren't doing very well for the amount of work I had to put into them. However, I'm relaunching them, or at least this one, and this video is sort of the example car for the new off-road contest I'm doing. You can find more details by following the invite link in the description, but I'll also discuss some of it in the video. After all, I'm trying to get you to participate, so I'd better tell you what you'd actually be doing. Plus, if you give me a car, I'll make a video with the results. As long as it doesn't end up like the Arctic Vehicles contest we did. Anything but that. As for those of you who won't, that's totally fine. Just sit back and enjoy the month-long torture I put myself through. The auto build starts with the mechanical stuff, as usual. I'm not being super particular about most of this, but I will stress the importance of using the right suspension layout for this build. For reasons you'll see in the suspension animation video, when and if I ever get around to doing that, it's really important for the mechanical suspension to match what I'm going to make with fixtures. Otherwise, when I try to make it move, the wheel won't move as it should, and all the suspension pieces will stretch out. After selecting the suspension, in this case double wishbone front and coil axle rear, I move on to the engine, and this is where I can stop caring again. The only thing to note here really is that this contest has a maximum power to weight ratio, so I'll have to tune all of this off camera so it meets that. This car won't be scored, obviously, and in fact it'll be entirely illegal for the contest due to my J-beam modding, but that's by design. I would never want someone to lose to the example car. The trim level mechanical bits don't matter all that much, in fact I end up changing a good amount of this stuff while tuning the power to weight ratio off screen, but I will note that this car is a 4x4. If I only had two driven wheels I'd get to have more power, per the rules, but there's no getting around this. Four wheel drive is just better at off-roading no matter what I do, and particularly for rock crawling a 4x4 drivetrain will be better. With all the mechanical stuff done, it's time for me to suffer a bit. You see, this isn't going to look like a Volkswagen Beetle for much longer. Instead, I'm going for the roll cage on wheels approach to off-road buggies, and unfortunately, this means entirely 3D placement for every fixture. It's very difficult to get the proportions right this way, so I'm essentially just cloning the auto buggy from Beam's latest update for now, which is a statement that will age really poorly if the update they've been teasing for a bit comes out before I finish this. Anyway, after making a very rough proportion guide, I get started on the roll cage, made out of a ton of cylinders as well as whatever a curved cylinder is called. Come to think of it, I think I end up using these roll cage fixtures on almost every car I make, whether it's for an actual roll cage or not. Not sure if that's the fixture being useful or just my builds being weird. A small difficulty here is trying to think about structural integrity, but I can take care of most of that by just being lazy and, as mentioned, copying some of the auto buggy's roll cage. Plus, this isn't really functional in beam, so as long as it looks safe, it might as well actually be so. What's a bit lost in the edit here is that the first stage of the roll cage build, before I start doing other things in addition, took me two days to finish. Part of that's just me having an extremely busy schedule and way too many hobbies, which is why my videos always take so long, but it's still many hours of work, and though I'm about to move to the front suspension, there's still a good bit of roll cage work to do later. Okay, now we move to the main feature of this build. Custom suspension. I've done it before on an unreleased truck build, trust me, you don't want to see it, but that was nowhere near the level of detail I want to get with this. It is, after all, meant to get animated suspension, this needs to have some amount of work put in to be worth doing the beam mods. In any case, I'm more or less stealing the suspension from Beam's Rock Basher or Dune Kicker. Take your pick, they have essentially the same suspension layout. 
Having made some very basic wheel hubs, I move on to the lower suspension arms, which are easy enough. Due to the angle I took my reference images from, I miss that the arms don't have a uniform thickness, but who cares? It makes them look marginally less clony on mine. It's at this point in editing that I realized I probably need to speed things up even more than I already have. You see, I have 40-something automation recordings for this video, totaling probably more than 50 hours of work, and unless I want this video to be an hour long and come out sometime in mid-April, I probably need to hurry it along a little bit. So you've seen me build the spring while I was saying that, I'll now just list off a bunch of suspension parts. I build the shocks, including a bypass system, essentially just taken from beam again because I don't know what bypass shocks actually look like. I make mounts for the shocks, as well as whatever this cylinder connected to the spring is. The dune kicker has it and the rock basher doesn't, but I might as well since it adds some detail. I add drive axles and a slightly lazy differential, then I build the upper arms, which go around the springs and shocks just as they do on the beam vehicles. After making the mounts for those, it's onto an extremely lazy steering rack, because you won't really be able to see it in auto or beam. Then I have to fix something stupid I did. If you look at the back of my chassis, it's designed like a Baja buggy. Only one problem with that. I want a solid axle, and this design gives me absolutely no suspension travel with that. So, after researching a bit, by which I mean I just took about 20 pictures of the Rock Basher, which also uses a mid-engine solid axle layout, I first accidentally renamed my engine variant to the letter S, then I cloned the car and redesigned the rear of my roll cage. I then make a gearbox, transaxle, and driveshaft tunnel. The first two don't need much detail because they will be hidden by... pause while I finish the front of the chassis... the fuel tank. Oh, and sometime while doing that, I also renamed the car trim, too. Next up, time for the rear suspension. We start with the rear axle. Some of the geometry of it is a little weird to figure out, but with enough tiny triangle pieces, I can make it look efficient by being as inefficient as possible. I'd love to use a gearbox fixture for the rear diff, but they all have extremely obvious starter motors on them, so it's just whatever this thing is. Then I run into a problem. See this suspension arm on the rock basher? How would you make that in auto? Some angled rectangles on the side, either some rotated bits or triangles to make a diagonal edge, and then cylinders on the bottom for the rounded curve, right? Wrong. That works in theory, but as it turns out in practice, the geometry just doesn't work out that way. The side of the suspension arm ends up having to kind of twist slightly to match up with that cylinder curve, which is very difficult to demonstrate. I made this diagram while working on it, but as you can tell, it's a terrible diagram. Point is, I actually can't make this the way I want to, because it curves in all three dimensions and auto just doesn't have the fixtures to do that. Instead, I'll have to make this slightly less nice-looking square-edged version. Next up, the rear springs and shocks, which are the same as the front ones, but a little longer. While working on the mounts for the shocks, I also managed to rename the engine one last time. Then I add these secondary arms, as well as these weird off-road sway bars, and... I'm finally done with the suspension. I know it feels like I rushed through it in the edit, particularly if you're trying to learn anything from this, but trust me, this took forever. I won't accidentally rename the car anymore, but while I'm working on the last bits of the rear of the roll cage, I managed to break the camera instead. Huh. This is done by pressing 7 and then 9 on the numpad, if you're wondering, then you can just move the camera normally and it's upside down. Totally useless, but interesting, I guess. Next up, some relatively simple custom exhaust. On most of my builds, this would be an important feature. On this one, it's so much of a footnote that I straight up forgot I did it until I saw the file name right before writing this line. Then a dashboard using a working beam screen. I could make an automation version of that, like I did on the sim racing hypercar, but unfortunately, auto doesn't let you save groups of fixtures, and I'm not spending several hours making the exact same thing again. Pretty much burnt out at this point due to the extreme detail I've gone through to make everything else, I add a steering wheel, accidentally mirroring the steering column and not even noticing until I'm done with the many hours of J-beam modding. Not to mention forgetting to even record the making of that switch panel. Oh, and I also forgot the shifter. Amazing. Anyway, that's it for the auto stuff, finally. Let's take some photos.
Okay, here it is in beam. As mentioned, a ton of J-Beam stuff went on, most notably animated suspension, but also a working steering wheel, a bunch of node editing, and an attempt to fix some weird handling stuff. I'll cover all of that in a different video, but for now, let's take it for a test drive. The buggy actually makes a surprisingly good rally car because of some of the stuff I'll cover in the J-Beam video, probably. In short, despite having soft sway bars, the suspension J-beam seems to stiffen things up anyway, which makes it handle fairly decently on a fast dirt road. Of course, this isn't ideal for rock crawling or similar hardcore off-roading, so I tried to fix it, but I couldn't, and as you'll see, it's still not too bad. Something that also really helps this car for rallying like this is locking the rear differential and leaving the front open. It helps to swing the rear out just a little in the corners. The handbrake, by the way, does next to nothing. I forgot to change that when I was modding the car. You might have noticed from the movements of the in-game steering wheel that I am, in fact, driving on a wheel. It's generally more difficult to drive off-road and beam on a wheel than it is on a controller, so I suspect the car will handle differently for most of you than it does for me. But for the most part, the slower steering isn't a huge issue on my end. So yeah, the buggy handles pretty well off-road, but... Well, off-roading's all well and good. What does it do on a paved road? It's not what the buggy's made for, obviously, but it is now tradition. Let's take it to Imola for a timed lap. As a reminder, here's what the leaderboard looked like as of the last video I did. Somehow I doubt it's going up here. For some reason the car spawns inside the ground, but after testing it turns out that it just wheelies its way out when we start, so I'll just ignore it and get on with the lap. Okay, we're starting off in 4x4 mode, which is pretty unusual. The reason I'm doing this is because, although the car gets out of the ground pretty easily that way, if I had it in rear-wheel drive mode, which is very hard to say, uh, the car would just get stuck in the ground a bit. I switched to rear-wheel drive immediately after launching, because it makes the car a little bit more nimble and easier to drive in corners such as this one. I braked a little bit too early here, because I had done something like five takes previous to this, and in every single one I had overshot the corner. The car has really bad brakes. They have a tendency to lock up sometimes, but mostly they're just not good. Uh, combine that with the horrible turn-in, because the front wheels are just like the rear wheels off-road tires. This car is just not good. Not good for circuit racing, anyway. Up next is a hairpin that you would think would be the most difficult part of the circuit for this car, but as it turns out, the car's pretty stable here. I think this is because of the open differential that basically means that I don't get any oversteer here. In fact, the car actually goes too slow here. I revved the engine a few times because I realized that I was just basically hugging the inside line. It's the best I can do. This blind crest hides another corner. I break pretty early here because I had overshot that in previous takes as well. Uh, could have gone faster, but it's good enough. This is an off-road buggy, you don't really expect me to be setting a flying lap time. This corner here is I think I have mentioned in every single commentary track, that is two, that I have done up until this point, can be taken flat, but like in the other cars, I won't do it in this one because it's just not <laughs> that good. Um, now we go up this straight. The chicane after this is generally a difficult braking point, but in this car, it is the one braking point on the entire circuit that I can manage. Maybe it's because I cut the corner so heavily. The exit of the chicane is fairly stable because of the open differential. Then we go down here, slight bend, and then further up ahead there's a sort of blind corner. We want to brake a little bit before that because this car has, as I have said, horrible brakes. This ensures that we can make the next corner, which, again, I braked maybe a little too early for, but better too early than too late. Then there's just one more corner left, and we can kind of just proceed down a long straight where I run out of things to say. Uh, you obviously don't know this, but this is like my tenth take uh, trying to commentate this. For whatever reason, I am just not on my game with racing commentary at the point of recording this. There is a reason I normally do post-commentary. Anyway. Let's see how the car did.
Okay, that's actually a little faster than I expected an off-road buggy to go. I have a theory that, for whatever reason, auto cars are just naturally a little faster than beam ones, though, of course, this car is still not going to beat the club racer bolide a few spots above it, for instance. And that's pretty much it. Despite its flaws, which are mostly just things I forgot to do, I think this is my best auto car to date, and certainly my best beam conversion. If you want to join in the contest, follow the Discord link in the description, react to the rule list to get verified, and check the auto contest channel for the rule document. One of the two contest managers or I can answer any questions you might have. Hope to see you there! I'll also be publishing this car on the Beam repository, like with all my crazy J-Beam creations. It sometimes takes a while to get approved, so be patient, but whenever it is, I'll put the link in the description as well. I'll eventually get all that J-Beam stuff edited and published as a video, though I won't guarantee it'll be the next video. But be on the lookout for that if you're interested. For now, though, thanks for watching, and goodbye.